Hey guys, Dan here with Total Realty Advisors. I'm here with uh, Greg from Platte Park Brewing today and our next episode of the Denver Brewery interview series. Yeah. So Greg, tell me, when, when did you guys open up for business? Uh, June 4th, two years ago. So okay. we're preparing for our second anniversary party now. Uh, and we're moving into bottles as well. So oh, two years in, we're, we're starting our bottle campaign uh, this weekend, actually. There's a lot involved, and coming from a brew pub background, it's all kind of new and, and fun for me as well. What inspired you guys to open up Flat Park Brewing? You know, there was, when you look at the map of Denver, we have quite a few breweries on the front range, but there weren't any in this area. And, you know, I have a love for Denver, but especially sort of the south side. Mm. Uh, I don't live very far from here, and, and uh, it just seemed like the right place at the right time. Sure. Um, and then this building became available, and uh, it, it just is a magical place, this neighborhood, yeah. and, and this time, right now. So it became kind of a no-brainer. Then it became, okay, we have the building, we have the location, we have the neighborhood, we have everything that we like. How do we transition from you know dreams to, sure. to reality? And when you look at this building from the front, it, it doesn't look like there's room for a brewery here. You know, right. we need ceilings and cold liquors, you know, cold storage space and, 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 you know, just a lot of room. Tanks take up a lot of room. Sure. But then as you walk through and you go to the back of the brewery, you realize there's an entire warehouse back there that you would never see from the front of the street. Yeah. So when you guys started, how did you get your brewing equipment? Did you guys buy new or did you? Absolutely. <clears throat> so... There was a time in mid 2000s, early 2000s, where you could find used equipment. Mm. People were upgrading. Uh, I helped a friend of mine in, in uh, Texas kind of go through some old equipment from St. Arnold because they were getting too big and mm. he was just starting out. But uh, the current climate for brewing in the United States is there's no more used equipment. Mm. It, it's already it's gone. So you might be able to find a tank here, a tank there, but to actually cobble together an entire brew house, it's almost impossible today. Mm -hmm. So we did buy new. Uh, we went with a manufacturer out of California um, whom I had had previous experience with. Uh, it took, it, it takes some time. I mean, it takes about four to six months to get to your get brewery put, put together sure. the way you want it put together. And then to get it shipped across the Rockies, because that's the other thing. I, I think probably 95% of American manufacturing for brewing equipment is on the West Coast. Okay. So Greg, tell us a little bit about your yeast. Do you keep live culture, or do you start with a virgin yeast each time? Both, actually. Okay. Uh, yeast is, is interesting, because at the level we're brewing at, which is kind of the, the micro level, mm -hmm. you know, less than 5,000 barrels a year, we have lab equipment. We take a look at our yeast. We make sure it's healthy before we use it. But we don't really have the ability to produce it or propagate it, right? We don't have those sorts of laboratory mm. equipment available to us. So we're really dependent on a, an independent lab, a third party, to produce a pure culture, to send that culture to me, and then we will use that culture in the brewery. Uh, right now, I'm on about generation 10. So. Okay. We don't buy a pure pitch every time we brew a beer, but we find the right beer, we buy a pure pitch, we ferment that beer out, and then we harvest it. So we, we will try to continue to sure. harvest it. And as long as the yeast appears happy, you know, it, it does what it's supposed to do under the microscope, we'll continue to reuse it. So what's, uh, what's your flagship beer or your best selling beer? Uh, it, we actually have two. We have two that kind of duke it out every week. It's the IPA, Tropic okay. Snow Dance. Uh, we use a, a hefty dose of mosaic hops in there, which are very popular right now. Uh, it's a very kind of true to true to recipe sort of San Diego IPA, and then our vanilla cream ale. So two opposite sides of the sure. spectrum. One, yeah, that's interesting. One very malty and and uh, based on a flavor that's not beer, vanilla, and then one that is very hoppy and uh, true to form for kind of where America's at the beer scene in 2016. Okay. Those are definitely our two flagships. We have four beers uh, here at the Tap House at all times. Faded Pale Ale, that's probably the brewer's favorite uh, because it is a lower alcohol. Um, the IPA, the Cream Ale, and then our Astronaut Amber. Oh, okay. Not quite as popular, but 
definitely in the top four all the time. Greg, I have to ask you, what is the best type of beer? Wow. Um, that answer has changed a lot for me over the years. Uh, it was definitely <clears throat> sort of Belgian styles that, that pushed me in the early days. I have to admit now, though, what I really look for is a nice, well-balanced, slightly hoppy pale ale. We have just recently, in the last five years, eclipsed the number of breweries, or equaled the number of breweries we had in the United States before Prohibition. Mm. So wow. the whole idea with beer is it, it really should be treated like milk. It doesn't need to get warm. It doesn't need to be shipped all over the country. It, it, it should be a local, fresh experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it should be basically what we have set up here, just a place where you can walk to, you can hang out and have a, a couple of fresh beers. Sure. And we got away from that, you know. Well, Prohibition put a monkey wrench into everything. But the whole idea is that, and, and I, I would love to see this kind of renaissance that's happening in Denver happen everywhere. You should not have to go more than six blocks to get a fresh beer. Well, thanks for talking with us today. You're welcome. Pleasure. Uh, guys, make sure to uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Also, like us on Facebook so you can see the future episodes of the Denver uh, Brewery Series. And definitely come in and check these guys out at Platt Park Brewing. Enjoy a beer. Cheers. Cheers.